welcome to this episode of Planet Rise. In a two-part series, we accompanied the Fuel Executive Board mission of the International Fund for Agricultural Development, IFAD, on a week-long visit to projects sponsored by the organization in Cameroon. Come with us and let's show you how young people have taken up agriculture and are gainfully employed. <laughs> For close to four decades, the International Fund for Agricultural Development, IFAD, has been working with Cameron's Ministry of Agriculture and other local agents to enhance the agricultural sector and boost the well-being of rural poor people. IFAD's activities are targeted at improving the incomes and food security of the rural poor, especially women and youth. In July 2019, the Field Executive Board Mission of IFAD visited different regions of Cameroon to make an evolution of projects that IFAD has been funding. In a mini trade fair in Douala, delegates had a chance to see for themselves the results of the Youth Agropastoral Entrepreneurship Program, popularly known by its French acronym PA Jeune, who have been benefiting from technical and financial assistance of IFAD. Okay, my name is Luna Wukam. We are IFA, IFA that is Fishing and Fish Farming and Accessory. We are an uh, agro-pastoral company that does into fish farming, the production of fingerlings, the production of um, uh, table fish, fish feed, and the distribution of um, uh, equipment and accessories. Okay, what I would say is that before being supported, we were not a company. So the support, that was the main, the, the main focus for us on the, on, on the support was the training. They taught us how to structure as an enterprise, and today, uh, we are an enterprise, so that's the main thing I will, I will say for the moment. My name is Karel. My project consists of transformation of fruits into juice. For instance, I make orange juice, pineapple juice, guava and citrus juice. Support from IFAD helped me to take off as an enterprise. It helped me to buy equipment which made production much more easier. Support from IFAT some say has gone a long way in improving lives. The support has come to alleviate, to reduce poverty. You now see in our area of Aguli, the farmers now can live, they have improved on their living standard. They can send their children to school now with ease. They have improved on their housing, their clothing and medical. So the support has actually caused us, and again, not only financial support, the capacity building of the farmers has made them now to come to understand that that giveaway selling of their rice in the farm through the middleman was of that they were cheating them. If I tell you now that if you leave here and go to Aguli now, you cannot, we used, they used to sell one bag of uh, whole rice, this white rice, for 10,000. But today, as I'm discussing with you, it has gone up to 16,000. At Dibombari in the Litua region, Ifat's team met young people who transform life to smoke and package chicken for sale. The young people appreciated the assistance from Ifat but wish for more to grow their company. For our, for our project, we are seeing that it's progressing and we are really hoping that it should go further, it should evolve so that we will have a lot, we will have more workers. 
We are we are very happy that Yukpa are here. So we believe that as Yukpa are going, there will be a support for us to grow our company and employ more workers. Both physical and financial, we need it because we need things like machines that we can use. We need a lot of equipment that we can use that we are not available to provide them now for a while. I'm very happy of my job. I'm very proud of it. Okay. Is In Pinja, in the Mongo division of the Litua region, the team met with students trained on white pepper production. Over the years, the Pinja white pepper produced on the volcanic soil of the Pinja Valley has gained international reputation, becoming one of the world's most coveted white pepper demanded globally. 24-year-old Tinjong Louis Njoya, a beneficiary of IFAD, Peya Jeune program says not only is he gainfully employed, but he has been able to create jobs too. I am fully employed with my industry and my enterprise, and I've been able to create both uh, employment to other youth, both directly and indirectly. But why white purple? But I choose purple because, based on the geographical indication, uh, that was granted to Pinja White Pepper. I choose that domain. It is a label. It is a product, uh, product which is highly looked for in the world market, both nationally and internationally. And it is a great deal to, to be in that field. And you wouldn't want to regret it trying it. Yes, it is a field which is mostly, mostly requested. And any other person who benefit from, who benefits from the program would not regret choosing White Pepper. And that's why personally, uh, what motivates me more about what I got you. Ambassador Hisham Mohammed Bart, who headed the IFAD delegation, said, because of the global value of the Penja white pepper, there is need to train more young people to boost the sector. Here, uh, pepper is in this region has been classified as a geographic indicator, therefore it has a global value. The importance of how to use this destination and this place to get more people in Cameroon, the young men and young women, to be trained in order to expand this, in order to, for them to be able to, what does it mean to be a geographic indicator, what does it mean to be a global impact, what does it mean to be worldwide, to be able to commercialize, to, be able to produce more, to be able to put a product, to be able to diversify, to be able to put ingenuity, to be able to put technology, to be able to expand into much way. So this is a very important experience that we saw today and we appreciate the role and I think there should be more assistance to the young people and uh, to, to, to produce more in this important area. He believes there is need to increase the value chain of the product. This is an agricultural area and how to make the agro uh, production, to take it from simply agriculture to bring it into the world market. The challenge we face in Africa is how to bring such a global, very important product, how to market it, how to make it known to the world market, how to produce, to take it one step further from its natural state to a more manufactured state, to a more to make it into nutrition value, to make it into medicinal value, to all of this. From stage one, while it's on the tree, to be able to make other steps through some technology, with some processing, with some manufacturing, with some technique. And this requires that more people pay attention here and it requires a lot of training and capacity building and technology and also funding and resource because this is one of the natural heritages of the world. A few kilometers from Penja in Lum, we met Fosing Stefan, who gave the delegation a ride of what he calls a garden of seeds. Here, he nurses seeds of white and black pepper, and farmers come here to buy the seeds for cultivation. Je fonctionne avec avec certains jeunes qui me permet à accélérer le processus de l'évolution de mon activité. Donc moi je peux déduire que ce programme est en train de nous aider déjà à avancer dans notre initiative.
Our activity has permitted many young people to feed themselves. Youth who are involved in filling polythene bags go home every day with some money. I also work with other youth involved in different processes of the nursery, so I can say without a doubt that with the support of this program, we are gainfully employed. And that was it for part one of our two-part series of a tour of IFAC sponsored projects in Cameroon. Hope you did enjoy it. In part two, we take you to the west and center region of the country. Hope you did enjoy it. In part two, we take you to the west and center region of the country. I've been your regular host, Regina Lake Tata. Thank you for watching. part two of a tour of IFAT sponsored project in Cameroon. In this part, we kick off in Gondo, in the west region of the country. Come with us. On these 80 hectares of land in Gondo, is rice cultivated by over 117 farmers members of a rice production association comprising of 56 men, 40 women and 21 youths. Fuel is a board delegation from IFAT went round the rice plantation to see for themselves the process involved. An official from Cameron's Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development sheds some light on the project to the visiting team. We are here in Gundup, Kutaba, one of the sites and cooperative that was accompanied by the PATFA project with support from IFAD. Patfa has worked in four regions, the north, far north, west and northwest. For the sake of the visit, we chose to visit the west region. The project focuses on rice and onion cultivation. The project here explores the entire value chain from production, storage, transformation and marketing. On his part, the president of the cooperative appreciated support received so far. Honorable members of the board of IFAD, we want to thank you very much for this great visit. The PATFA project came here in 2013. They brought us together a group and made us to understand the value of agriculture, especially rice cultivation. They divided us into cooperatives and we were later divided into groups where we got support. You can see for yourselves the work we have been doing. We have been planting rice here and most recently we connected some pipes that have been channeling water to our rice fields. And this is your white rice from Gundup. With the help of these machines, the rice are shredded and then packaged and sold in kilograms. A kilogram of rice is sold at 1,000 francs CFA and those who have bought and cooked the rice say it is very tasty. Farmers involved in rice cultivation say they choose the sector because they realize a huge deficit in supply in Cameroon. 
I chose agriculture precisely rice cultivation because there is a huge deficit in supply as compared to demand. The head of state, His Excellency Paul Bia in 2010, called on Cameroonians to get involved in rice cultivation and we took the challenge and grouped ourselves into cooperatives of rice cultivators in Kutaba. On construit les maisons, les enfants fréquentent très bien. The visiting delegation made a stop at the storeroom and equally had an exchange with different members of the cooperative who explained how beneficial the project has been. But they equally have some major challenges. Our main difficulty is the fact that our rice is not competitive. We lack infrastructure for rice in transformation. We need a laboratory to do tests. We need tractors. We also need improved seedling and we need constant training. If all of this is done, we will be able to improve the quality of our rice and stand competition in the market. In Bandunga village, in the Ndei division of the West region, the fat delegation was welcomed with song and thanks. This is Planet Rise. Welcome to Bandunga Village in the Day Division and Tonga Subdivision of the West Region of Cameroon. We are in the rice plantation where rice is being cultivated on this 10 hectares of land. And on the other side of the village, we have four hectares too. The population say they cultivate 90 tons per year and 30% of the rice is being consumed locally. 150 members are made, uh, make up the RICO uh, cooperative, which is the Recorporation Rice and uh, 83 are women, the rest are men and the youth. The team met another group of rice farmers made up of 83 women, 45 men and 22 youths. The team visited a 10 hectare plantation of rice that produces about 90 tons of rice annually with 30% being consumed locally. Addressing the delegation at one of the rice plantations, Bernard Munye Yin, the director and representative of IFAT sub-regional office for Central Africa, explains how farmers moved from traditional farming to mechanized farming. So those guys you see here today, actually they were farming rice traditionally, as he mentioned to you. They were here using, not using improved variety. So this project came with, I mean, a package of support. Her Majesty Njantu Mirabel, a local rice producer, attests Ifat supported project Patfa has been accompanying them in their work. Patfa has been accompanying us. They train us. They give us improved seedlings, which in turn gives us good harvest. But she has one wish from Ifad. If Ifad could help us with machines for rice collection, that would be great. The machines are in the market, but they are very expensive. Harvesting rice is sometimes very challenging. If they could make this easier by donating machines, it would be nice. Even planting machines are not enough. Like you saw earlier on, we have just one machine for two zones. We always start cultivation late because many people depend on the machine. This explains why most people choose to use their hands in planting. And because of this labor cost, our rice is also more expensive. If we had more machines, we could even increase our hectares of rice plantation. In Markenene, Ifat delegation was received by members of the Bamenda Police Cooperative Credit Union. A series of presentations were made before the visiting delegation to explain how the body has been assisting farmers to get 
loans to carry out projects. Tanda Mekem Jolivo is the chief of projects and marketing for the mother branch Kimco. He says collaboration with EFAT over the years has been fruitful. This uh, building you are seeing behind me was, uh, is a fruit of the cooperation that existed between uh, Kamkul and uh, Patmi that was sponsored by FIDA and uh, we had this building and uh, 11 other buildings around uh, the, 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 the national territory. Uh, we, uh, we are giving services, microfinancial services to, to members, uh, especially uh, in the domains of uh, loans uh, and financial education. We have uh, here in this branch of Makenene uh, over 100, 1,000, over 1,000 uh, members that have been served and uh, we are giving them credit in the domain of agriculture, poultry and uh, education. So I think uh, globally that's uh, Bapul Makenene. And Makenene being an agricultural zone makes the presence of the microfinance even more timely. Out of the, the, the portfolio that we have, uh, more than 80% 80, 80 uh, is uh, for agriculture. And uh, you know this Ag Makenene is already an agricultural zone. And all the activities here uh, mainly uh, to finance uh, those agriculture. But we also have business people that uh, do small business around Makenene. And uh, they always come here for loan facilities. A beneficiary also spoke out. Bakul in 2014 gave me a loan and that loan uh, has helped me to fertilize my farm, treat my farm, work on that farm and that farm has uh, produced triple even its production as it was at first. In the central region, precisely at Obala, the visiting delegation from Ifat met with students of the Agricultural Institute, popularly known by its French acronym EAO. Edwidge Belibi Noir, a maize farmer and mother of six, told the visiting delegation how support from IFAD through the Payagene program changed her life. I was born in a typical agricultural family, so I also chose to go into agriculture. When I joined the Payagen program, it helped me to improve on my farming activity. Before, I used to cultivate small farms of less than a hectare. The program permitted me to double my production and today, I have six hectares farm. My wish from Ifart now is that they help me with machines because I will soon extend to 25 hectares and with such expansion, I cannot farm money. <laughs> Authorities at the Agricultural Institute of Obala testify their win win partnership with IFAT over the years. The visit of the Executive Board of IFAT and IAO proves once more the pertinence of what we do here in terms of professional training. We started working with IFAT three years ago and in less than three years, we have trained more than 500 youths and among these youths, about 300 enterprises have been created. You can see for yourself some of the products displayed by the young entrepreneurs. Youth agro-pastoral entrepreneurship, we can say, is the future of Cameroon. Still in Obala, youths from Bafia who carry out a project on horticulture gave a presentation how the project has been helping to empower young people who don't have access to land to do intensive cultivation on a small piece of land. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, the Bafia Diocese because uh, it is through them that I personally got uh, you know, the news concerning this.
and then it was time to make merry. The visitors had enough to eat and yes, drinks too, fabricated by young entrepreneurs. And that was it for part two of a tour by the Fuel Executive Board Mission of the International Fund for Agricultural Development, EFAD, in Cameroon. The visiting delegation had a chance to visit different sponsored projects across Cameroon. You've been watching Planet Rise on Canal de English. And I've been your regular host, Regina Neke Tanzak. You can follow us on Facebook at Planet Rise. You can equally watch the video on YouTube at my channel, Regina Leke. But for now, goodbye. Thank you.